Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mikołaj Gulba. I am first year uh, PhD student at uh, University, uh, Wrocław University of Science and Technology. And uh, I will be talking about photoinduced electron transfer in nucleic acids. And first, in order to uh, mention something about the motivation for the study, uh, we all know that uh, we should wear sunscreen on especially days like today to protect our uh, skin from uh, UV-induced photo damage. For example, photo, uh, photo damage such as uh, formation of cyclobutane thymine dimers in, uh, between, uh, in DNA strands. Uh, however, uh, uh, there is also a, hmm, a different uh, UV-induced mechanism, a self-repair mechanism uh, that works in DNA strands which could lead to uh, repairing of uh, such uh, cyclobutane uh, dimers uh, by uh, transferring electron from guanine to adenine and then to uh, such timing dimer. This uh, mechanism was uh, studied uh, by a group of scientists, including my supervisor, uh, Dafo Schabla. And earlier this year, they, they published a paper in which they uh, made an interesting observation uh, the self uh, repair quantum yield for a structure TTAG was higher than for a, a structure with reverse sequence GATT. In order to explain this phenomena, they looked at the uh, structure of these two uh, strands and they observed that the uh, overlap of these two bases in that uh, structure with higher quantum yield is uh, visually better than in the second one. And uh, that is an interesting hypothesis. However, in order to prove that, we would need some better uh, way to assess this uh, overlap rather than just uh, by our uh, naked eyes. And uh, this brings me to, to the first goal of the study, which is to find uh, a method for evaluation of this uh, stacking score between uh, nuclear bases. Uh, of course, in In the literature, there were some uh, uh, such algorithms published before, for example, this condom stacking definition uh, that uses uh, parameters such as uh, distance between the centroids of the bases and a uh, couple of angles. Uh, however, I wasn't able to find any uh, algorithm that would use the uh, overlap area of these two bases uh, directly. And uh, this is important because looking at such simple example, the uh, condom stacking definition should give us the same uh, result, uh, the same stacking score for these two uh, systems, uh, even though the, uh, the area is different, they are uh, oriented uh, differently. And uh, this brings me to this uh, middle point of my uh, presentation, which is the uh, algorithm for uh, evaluation of uh, stacking score that we developed uh, within our group. Uh, this algorithm is best described uh, with this picture. So first we find uh, planes that describe individual uh, bases that are uh, adjacent to each other. We then uh, obtain this uh, middle green uh, plane as a product of these two, these two planes and then project those two bases on this middle plane. This allows us to uh, simply calculate the overlap as uh, an overlap of two shapes on the same uh, 2D plane. And uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, fraction of the uh, smaller basis uh, area that is overlapped by the larger basis is being used as a, one of the parameters for my uh, stacking score algorithm. I also use two other parameters. Uh, one is uh, angle uh, between the planes, and it is uh, um, uh, used. Uh, it is described with uh, uh, equation uh, that is uh, visual uh, presented here. And this equation makes it that for uh, systems that have uh, close uh, that are close to being parallel with each other, uh, the uh, stacking score is close to one. Uh, the this uh, parameter score is close to one. Mm. Next, I also use the distance between the uh, bases calculated as a distance as a sum of distance between this middle plane and centroids of each of the uh, nuclear bases, and uh, uh, this is uh, 
uh, this uh, function for the distance is uh, presented here. Uh, this part is an uh, unharmonic function uh, obtained by fitting to the uh, potential energy uh, scan done for uh, adenine guanine uh, system. And then when, we, when I have these three uh, parameters, I define the stacking score as uh, a product of these three parameters uh, because each of those parameters uh, goes from 0 to 1, the stacking score also goes from 0 to 1, and the, uh, the 1 is the system in which the uh, bases are parallel to each other and uh, exactly uh, uh, overlap uh, 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 each other. Uh, while zero is unstacked, uh, completely unstacked system. Uh, the uh, algorithm is available via Python code on my uh, GitHub repository. If someone is interested, here's a QR code. Mm. Uh, so with this uh, first goal of my study achieved, uh, now is the time to uh, test uh, how our uh, algorithm works on some systems and in order to do so I wanted to calculate uh, excitation energy for uh, charge transfer and locally excited states for different uh, theory and tetranucleotides uh, and uh, see how this uh, stacking uh, score would uh, affect the uh, energy of charge transfer state. And, uh, First, I optimized uh, those uh, three antitonucleotides in their uh, ground state with uh, uh, methodology presented here. And uh, just to show you how difficult it would be to extract some information about stacking from the structure, uh, I think it's better to use uh, some uh, code uh, to do this. And uh, then, of course, I optimized and uh, I optimized the uh, excited states with different uh, characters. Here are the charge transfer states for uh, three nucleotides, AGG and GGA. And uh, I used them to uh, construct uh, some relaxation uh, pathways for the system. So what is happening here, we have our uh, AGG nucleotide. It is excited and then uh, we can see how this excited state relaxates. And uh, here we can see that the uh, charge transfer state lies above the locally excited S1 state. And uh, this is uh, not uh, good for the uh, um, electron uh, transfer in the system because uh, the uh, efficiency of this electron transfer will not be, uh, uh, will be lower. Additionally, we can see that the stacking score presented here with this uh, green number between these uh, two bases that uh, participate in this charge transfer uh, was calculated to be 0 0.28. And uh, contrary to this, on the GGA uh, system, uh, the uh, situation is uh, reversed. The charge transfer states, uh, state is now the lower one, and the uh, stacking score for this system is now twice as high as, for it, as it was for uh, AGG system. And uh, similar results were obtained for the uh, other uh, tetranucleotides. Uh, for example, here for the uh, triple G A T nucleotide, the stacking score is 0 0.36, and the charge transfer state is the lower one. Mm, so now, moving to conclusions. Uh, we were able to develop a novel method for determining the stacking score between uh, nuclear bases. Uh, we observed a correlation between the uh, stacking uh, overlap of these nuclear bases and the uh, excitation energies of uh, charge transfer states. And uh, we, uh, I also want to mention that this uh, algorithm uh, can have some different applications. It can be used to analyze uh, DNA or RNA strand structure. To it, is, it can be easily used for non-canonical nucleotides as well as any system with uh, aromatic pi pi interactions. Uh, Lastly, I would like to acknowledge that this research was possible thanks to the uh, grant from uh, National Science Center of Poland, as well as uh, from the resources provided from uh, Rosław Center of Networking and Supercomputing, and uh, thanks to the uh, Basia, which is other uh, PhD student at our team, uh, who prepared uh, the systems that I then used in my study. 
And uh, now, thank you for your attention. Time for two questions. Uh, very interesting work. Um, I was wondering, your system is rather floppy. So have you tried to maybe a nuclear ensemble approach or like some MD dynamics and see how these uh, overlap yes. changes? With yes, you? so I mentioned this. The system were first uh, analyzed with molecular dynamics, which bashed it. And then I took the minima obtained from uh, clustering from this dynamics. And on those minima, I ran my calculations. Okay, but for the excited states, then no, no, was uh, that it? was for the ground state. We didn't do any uh, molecular dynamics for excited states. No, yeah, but I meant like the, the path that, that you showed at the end that yes. was based on a single minima. Yes, like how would that maybe change? Because maybe it would be interesting to check like the stacking for those geometries and then compare that with the excited state energies. Uh, yeah, that would be interesting to check that. There was one more question. <laughs> Hi, uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have a maybe similar question uh, about, so you're optimizing the geometries uh, with a PCM method. Yes. And y you have a very charged molecules, right? Like you have phosphates. Yes. Uh, how is, is, is that valid? Or the, how, if, uh, if you were to compare your geometries from the geometries that you got from the MD simulations, how different are they? Or yeah, uh, so we use uh, CPCM uh, solution model in order to include the linear response uh, part, uh, so in order to have some uh, effect of uh, effect of excited states on solvent, and uh, uh, the uh, similar studies were done uh, previously with. Uh, um, QMMM approach and the results are quite similar, so I think the methodology is okay. Let's thank Mikawa again.